say welcome back, everybody. Welcome back everybody. This week's video is gonna be all about our corn planter. It's been in the shop here for about a week. I have a very special guest for you. He is all the way from New York. It is me, Van Voss, back again for the first time on YouTube, I think. From New York, I'm 15, um, came up for a week. You love coming up here, don't you? I do. Yeah, he's worked with us in the summer in the past when he's not in school. Um, so let's get to it. He's been helping me here on the corn planter. Van, what is? what do you think about this thing? Um, a lot of technology, really crazy. Um, yeah, it's a lot of work though. It's very repetitive, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 16 rows. Yeah, so this is a 16 row white 9816. And we've been putting on conceal from precision planting. We've been working on updating some brackets, uh, redoing some fertilizer systems. So we've been, going, uh, we've been going strong here for the last few days and we are actually, I think we're on our way down here, ready to kind of wrap it up. We're gonna order some parts for the gauge wheel arm. So we're gonna have to wait on that for a little bit. That's gonna slow us down, but uh, Van will keep helping us here in the meantime. But yep. what else do you think? Um, it's good to be back. <laughs> it's good to be back. That's be what back. I like to hear. So. We should let Van explain to you guys how the planter works, like a row unit, and then I'll come back through and explain, and explain it, it uh, the way it actually works. And he's probably, he's pretty good, so he might get most of it right, so. I know how it works, just not the name. Exactly, I think, I think that's gonna hold you up, but you'll be yeah. fine. So I'll be explaining to you what this machine and how it works. So it's a 16 row planter, and I'm gonna show you one of the rows. So we start out here in the front, and this spins to clear out any debris in the way of past harvest or just debris like if there are rocks or anything big. And then we move back here and we, we're just installing these. These are the fertilizing arms that will drop down to the trenches we're making and put fertilizer down. Or is it for the seeds? It might be for the seeds. Not exactly sure, we'll cross that path when we find it. Then we get to this blade, which makes the trench, and then this, these wheels, which we're working on up here to stay tight, um, create the trench as well, help to make it in a V shape so that the seed falls straight into it. Then we get down here in the back, this machine right here, I think is what drops the seed down, and That'll go into the trench, and then these push dirt back into the trench, and then this will press it down. I do not know the names of it, but that's how a row works. Now that Van explained to you uh, what he thought each part of the row unit does, I'm gonna go through and just give you a little better detail. He did an extremely good job for really not being around these things. I think he did a great job. So up here, like he said, these are called row cleaners and they clear out debris that's in the way of the following or trailing attachments here and everything that's gonna drop the seed. This is very important to have no trash in the way or no debris so that when we make a trench, we make a nice perfect V and there's a really good seed to soil contact. And that's what these disc openers do and they're shaped like a V. So from there, there's a tube in here from the meter. The meter drops the seed down into the trench. There's a firmer. This little white thing firms it. And firming means it keeps the seed on the bottom of the trench. So when you're going at five miles an hour and you don't have a firmer, the seed could drop down and possibly bounce. And some of it, some of the seed might be a little bit higher than the rest, uh, which is very, very important in corn that the seed is at the proper depth. From there, this is called FurrowJet. This is a fertilizer attachment. This is where fertilizer comes out in three different bands. I don't need to explain that uh, too much. This is your closing system called FurrowForce. It's a two-stage system controlled by an airbag and uh, way pins that I can view from the monitor in the cab. So this 
will pinch the slot from the bottom up, uh, pinch it tight and closed, and these come back, these are like little packing wheels, and they firm it and push that slot back down, close it up really, really nice. Okay, gauge wheel system. This big round wheel, I set my depth up here. Right now I have it set to two inches, what I, which is what I plant corn at. That will allow these gauge wheels to only come up two inches. And that sets these discs in the ground at two inches. So the gauge wheels are very important. Uh, they set the, set the depth for the seed. Okay, what keeps this row unit in the ground? I mean, what keeps, keeps the weight on it is this down pressure system right here. This is Delta Force, it uses hydraulics. It also uses a load pin right here. I'll give you a better view of that. Right here's that load pin. It sends information back to the SRM, which sends information back to the monitor. And we adjust on the fly. I wanna say it's like 100 times a second adjusting hydraulic pressure to keep that seed at the depth that you set it at, which is extremely important. Okay, the meter. How does the seed even come out of here, right? So it's a vacuum system. It uses that blower, another blower. Never mind, it's not a blower. Uh, it's a vacuum motor, right? So it creates vacuum in these black tubes. It also creates vacuum here. And that vacuum sucks up each seed that's in the meter. Carries it around, the brush cut off the vacuum, and it drops the seed straight down. So that's how the seed comes out of there. Okay, up here we have fertilizer tank. Over on that wing we also have a fertilizer tank. But how does the seed get to the meter? Okay, this isn't a very big box, and we plant uh, many, many acres. Well, the seed gets put into these big tanks. They each hold 45 bushel, I believe. I think that's a 90 bushel system there. And there is a large fan that pressurizes those tanks. Yep, there's your large fan that pressurizes those tanks. Those tanks are sealed. The seed blows through these uh, white tubes. They blow into the meter system. And then here is where the air can escape when the meter is full and there's no more seed that can fit in there. So then it just continues its way down to fill all the boxes. So that's pretty neat. And you don't have to stop very often to fill up each box. You just fill up the two big tanks on the top. Pretty efficient. Okay, Van. Yeah. <laughs> Van's over here eating a Twix bar. Twix bar. What did I miss? What does somebody that, that isn't around a planter very often need to know about these things? Uh, how fast does it go? What's the max? That is a really, really good question, actually. Okay, so a planter like this, set up like this, um, the, the, the speed is, we're probably planting around that 4.8, 4.9 mile an hour. Uh, in corn, maybe a little bit faster in soybeans. And why are we going that speed? Well, we need to singulate every single seed. So we need to have the perfect amount with not a lot of bounce on these row units so that every seed comes out uh, as one and not a double or a skip. Uh, that's, that's what we refer to. So there are systems out there that use a belt drive system that take it to the ground and you can go up, I believe, to 13 miles an hour Sheesh. planting. Yeah. Crazy. So, and that's all driven electronically. And that's some pretty fancy new technology also. So yeah, this planter also has an uh, onboard alternator, which is kind of cool because of the amount of power this thing needs. Everything's electric drive. There's an onboard alternator, which is driven hydraulically, which is pretty cool. Not something you would ever think about putting on no. a planter, but all these meters are driven with an electric motor. So There's need, tons of electronics on board here on each row times 16. If you yeah. take that and you yeah. multiply it by 16, you need a lot of power, a lot yeah. of amps. Yep. You should tell them about the tractor that has to pull it. About the tra I don't know anything except that it has treads, but. Tracks. Tra there you go. <laughs> Even better. Um, well, I could tell you the name of it. It is a New Holland T8 4, 410. With smart tracks on it. With smart tracks on it. So that's the tractor right there. Um, we'll get a closer look at the tracks right here. Um, they're really big. That's probably all I can tell you about it. Um, I would tell you the horsepower, but I don't know that either. It's probably 
really high, like something like 500. No, four, no okay. 410. Okay, let me explain oh, to you. Oh, this wait, 410 <laughs> is the whole Yeah, so this is a T8 410. It has a 410 engine horse uh, with the boost. Uh, they call it something like that. So it's like 380 engine horse otherwise normally. And then if you're using hydraulics or PTO at a heavy load, uh, it, the computers can boost that horsepower up to 410. So this one has tracks. You guys know it's been in the videos before. Uh, it's got six remotes, 78 gallon minute hydraulic pump, which is pretty important when you need uh, a planter like this. It needs a lot of hydraulic flow. This also has CVT, so that sucks up a lot of hydraulics, believe it or not. So yeah, you need a pretty big horse to pull this thing. This tractor weighs in at 42,000 pounds. So really? it'll work. Yeah, it works great for pulling the planter. It's 21 tons. 21 ton, 42,000 pounds. So it's a, it's, it's a big horse, and you need all of it there to to pull that guy. It's tomorrow, and before we get going today, we are going to clean our bench off because it's getting a little messy. And Van's over there helping me out. We have a planter that we sold that's getting loaded up. It's going to Indiana today. So we're waiting for the trucker to come and we are gonna get that bad boy loaded up, strapped down, and it's gonna be on its way. We are now loading the um, planter. It's the other one, the 24 row planter onto the trailer. And that is what they're doing right there. And yeah, they're gonna ship it off to, I think it's Indiana. So it's a long ride. We finished loading it up um, and this is where it's at. I'm wondering how do you feel? How do you feel to have the planter gone? Well we sold a soybean planter and it just got trucked. It was it's a pretty bittersweet feeling but it's good. It's a good thing. So shop shenanigans and so Papa and Lloyd are getting back and picking up tarps. And me and Uncle Num Num are gonna pretend to sleep and we got the view over there that you guys can see. So when they come in, we'll be pretending to sleep. And yeah, have a little laugh. All right, go ahead. What? How'd it go? You never do anything. Yeah. You get a picture? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we got whole fertilizing system set up. We got the whole thing plumbed. If that's the right word. We plumbered the whole thing. And yeah, now we just got to go finish that one row, get some parts, clean up, fold it up, and it's out of the shop. Well, we pretty much got the planter wrapped up. Just want to say thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you next time. City slicker trying to hook up an air hose. It won't even come off. Is this how you clean the remote at your house? <laughs> yes. <laughs>